Hola Guripas, estamos ante el mítico Pegasus Bridge, aunque en realidad este se trata de una réplica. Para ver el original vamos a visitar el Memorial Pegasus. Queremos conocer al detalle la exitosa misión de los paracaidistas de Hogwarts. Bienvenidos al Memorial Pegasus. El nombre de Pegasus Bridge viene del emblema de las unidades aerotransportadas británicas, la silueta de este personaje de la mitología griega. El conjunto de sus misiones en Normandía, la Operación Tonga, incluía la toma de este puente sobre el canal de Caen y un segundo puente sobre el río Orne. Era de vital importancia conservarlos intactos, ya que serían la única vía de enlace entre el resto de paracaidistas y las tropas provenientes de Sword Beach. La misión de los puentes en concreto, codificada como Operación Death Stick, fue confiada a la Compañía D del Regimiento Ox and Bucks de la Sexta División, reforzada por unos pocos más soldados y un grupo de ingenieros. En total, 180 hombres liderados por el mayor John Howard, que en lugar de saltar en paracaídas, aterrizarían en unas aeronaves sin motor, los planeadores, una técnica desarrollada por el ejército alemán que se usó casi exclusivamente en la Segunda Guerra Mundial. So we're inside the uh, the cockpit of a full-size copy of a British Horsa glider. So this is the type of glider the British used, but also the Americans, they had some, to fly into Normandy in, in 1944. Well, the aircraft took off at 11 o'clock in the evening, 2300 hours, on the 5th of June. It took 69 minutes to fly across. So at nine minutes past midnight mm -hmm. on the 5th of June, the morning of the 6th of June, that's seven hours, seven and a half hours, before the troops landed on the beaches, uh, the glider pilots released the tow cables and they released them uh, nine kilometers off the coast, which enabled the tug planes, the engined planes, to turn and fly back to England. So the Germans hadn't heard the engine noise of the tug planes and there was no noise when the gliders flew in. The Germans had no idea they were coming. Chicos, ahí detrás, ¿qué tal vais? Muy bien, gracias por interesaros. Bueno, Mark, y ahora estamos donde iban pues, la, la tropa. So, in a horse glider, there will be 28 men and two pilots, 30 men maximum. Um, usually 24, but Major Howard, who commanded the troops, wanted the maximum number of men down on the ground, and he managed to put in four extra men. But he had to weigh them because uh, the weight was the problem. There was space in here for more than 30 men, but 28 was the maximum with a weight. Um, the glider's landing next to Pegasus Bridge. They landed at 16, 17, and 18 minutes past midnight on the 5th of June, the morning of the 6th of June. But the first glider landed 47 meters from the bridge. Um, this was made of wood, canvas, three millimeter panels. So when they hit the ground, if the ground was rough, all the pieces would come up, it would splinter into tiny pieces mm -hmm. because the debris, or maybe there were tree trunks or stones, would come up inside. So they, they held each other's arms mm -hmm. and they raised their, bueno, yeah, raised their legs. Para la toma de cada puente, se asignaron tres planeadores con 30 soldados cada uno. Los propios piloto y copiloto debían sumarse al combate tras el aterrizaje. De hecho, no formaban parte de la fuerza aérea, sino que eran soldados de infantería reconvertidos en pilotos. So we are now on the original Pegasus Bridge. This is the bridge which was liberated by the glider-borne troops. The gliders landed so close to the bridge, within 10 minutes, Pegasus Bridge was captured by the British forces. Mm -hmm. It was so quick, the British troops ran into the German bunker next to the bridge and woke three Germans up. They were still in bed, asleep. Mm. And 10 minutes, the, the, um, the bridge was captured. No other mission on D-Day along the entire D-Day coast was as successful as the capture of Pegasus Bridge. The, the impact of the shrapnel and the bullets can still be seen on the sides mm. of, the, of the bridge today. By half past midnight, the bridge had been captured. Now, Major Howard would always say this was the easy part mm. of the mission. The hard part was holding it until relieved. And at about one o'clock in the morning, um, a 2,000 paratroopers were dropped two kilometers to the east of where we are, and amongst them were the men of the 7th Parachute Battalion, 600 men, and their mission was to come down and reinforce Major Howard's men, take over the defense of the, the bridges. And they were down on the bridge by about three o'clock in the morning, three, 3.30, and they had to take up positions around the bridges and in the village of Benoville. 
Aunque hoy nos centramos en el puente de Benouville sobre el canal de Caen o Pegasus Bridge, hay que recordar que la operación incluía la toma simultánea de un segundo puente sobre el río Orne a tan solo medio kilómetro de distancia, que fue también capturado de forma exitosa. El memorial Pegasus da testimonio de esta y otras misiones de las tropas aerotransportadas británicas en el día de hoy. Well, in the uh, display case here we see souvenirs belonging to Major John Howard, who led the attack on Pegasus Bridge in 1944, including his decorations, um, his helmet, which you can see here, a bullet went in the front and uh, came out the back, and it just took the skin off the off the top of his top of his head. He told me he had a headache for a few a few days, but he wasn't killed, fortunately. And a few souvenirs. Each soldier had an escape equipment. They had a, a compass some French francs, some sterilizing tablets and glucose tablets. And this is, this is Major Howard's original berry, which he wore on D-Day when he flew into Normandy. And I'd like to show you this. This flask was carried by Lieutenant Brotheridge, and Lieutenant Brotheridge led the charge over Pegasus Bridge and sadly was mortally wounded. And uh, before he died, the soldiers tried to give him a drink of whiskey from his, from his flask. And he's thought to have been the first allied soldier killed sadly on the 6th of June 1944. Los paracaídas no solo servían para desplegar soldados tras las líneas enemigas. También se usaban para hacer llegar provisiones a los combatientes, amortiguando la caída de grandes contenedores lanzados por la aviación. Mediante el color del paracaídas podía conocerse el contenido de antemano. Rojo para municiones, azul para raciones de comida amarillo para material médico, kaki para tropas y blanco para equipo variado. Y ahora estamos ante un paracaidista muy especial. Well, this is Rupert. This is a, a dummy parachutist. They were named Rupert because they looked like British, a British comic strip character called Rupert the Bear. And these are the dummy parachutists which were dropped elsewhere than in Normandy to make the Germans believe there would be landings elsewhere. Some of them had explosives on them and when they touched the ground they blew up and gave the impression to the Germans who were being fired at. Now the Americans were also using these mm -hmm. um, and you know the name of the, the dummy parachutist? No. Uh, Oscar. Sí, sí, dime, dime. No, no, Oscar was the name of the American dummy parachutist. <laughs> vale, vale, vale. Uh, Estoy destinado a ser paracaidista. <laughs> El mayor Hogwart y sus hombres debían aguantar la posición hasta ser relevados por la infantería llegada de Sword Beach. Durante la espera tenían que evitar que los tanques alemanes usasen ambos puentes para dirigirse a las playas, tarea que cumplieron gracias al uso del arma antitanque Piat como el expuesto en el memorial. Otra pieza llamativa es una de las gaitas usadas en la guerra por William Milling. Milling formaba parte de la primera brigada de comandos británicos. A su comandante, Lord Lobat, se le ocurrió usar la música de la gaita para avisar de su llegada a los soldados que estaban defendiendo el puente Pegasus. The Pegasus Bridge, the, the bridge itself is now in the park of the museum. It was taken off the canal in November 1993. It was 60 years old, it was worn out, mm. and it was a drawbridge. The, the roadway lifted up and the mechanism behind us here was, was becoming dangerous, so taken off, and the museum uh, bought it from the local French government. How much do you think we paid for it? Well, me imagino que una cifra bastante alta. Uh, one franc, oh. a, a symbolic one franc, which we never, never paid, so it oh, really was. <laughs> it really was a symbolic but the bridge is now in the park of the museum. Mm -hmm. It's been replaced by a much longer bridge. The, the new bridge is the same type, mm -hmm. but the, new, the roadway of the new bridge is 10 meters longer and a meter wider to allow for the passage of the trucks and larger buses and vehicles. The Memorial Pegasus Museum is dedicated to the men of the, the 6th British Airborne Division and all the artifacts in the museum, which is run, the museum's run by an association, all the artifacts have been given by veterans, uh, their families, friends and associations in the in the United Kingdom and, and Canada. There were Canadian airborne mm -hmm. troops also. Um, and there are lots of personal artifacts in the museum which people can relate to. They like reading the stories of the, the letters from a young soldier to his parents during the war or looking at souvenirs the veterans took home after the war, uh, which they never showed to their own children until until they were, they were old men or the, the, the children found them at the end of their, their lives in, in boxes and cupboards because they never wanted to show uh, these artifacts to their own children, but it was a symbol of their, their youth, 
fighting as soldiers during the war. Um, the museum here is dedicated to the troops, as I said, but we're not here to glorify what happened during the war. We're here to tell the story. So let's hope that future generations can, well, let's say, maybe not make the same mistake as previous generations. Bueno, esperemos que a partir de ahora, con este capítulo, todo el mundo comprenda esto. Muchas gracias, Marco. Pleasure. Thank you.